afternoon to all the viewers on Zoom and those joining us live streaming of this The Deca Quest. So this is your host, Malishri from Ignited Minds in Oventures. This is a STEAM education organization that we co-founded with the German uh, company. And uh, we actually promote project-based learning, conceptual learning of science and math. So we design and customize science kits for children grade-wise. It's like, you know, each grade has a different uh, project activity. And the DECA quest we have begun, it's a venture basically, you know, to connect the parents and educators with topmost educate, education leaders who are transforming our education system slowly and, you know, getting their innovative ideas into the system so that it works much better and we get a generation of not rote learners but innovators again. So we have with us a very, very eminent educator, a very well-known personality on TV also, and he is Mr. Kanak Gupta, and he is the group director of uh, SET MR Jaipuria Group of Schools, and um, these are around like 30, more than 37 schools pan India, and he's handling probably 2,000 educators, and uh, uh, more than 30,000 students are being, uh, you know, transformed through his institution, group of institutions. So uh, really honored to have you on board, sir. Really, really honored. My pleasure. Absolutely my pleasure. Looking forward to it. I was actually very excited, you know. I had been uh, thinking of calling you since a very long time, but since you didn't have time, you're packed with webinars. So I thought, okay, fine, let me just <laughs> give him more time. So uh, the, most of the educators in the field would know about Mr. Kanak, but there are a lot of parents also joining. So I would just like to tell them that he has more than 16 years of experience and he has done his schooling from Sanjeev Xavier's uh, Kolkata. Then he did uh, his MBA from uh, Purdue University. He's worked with India, in India, obviously, and UK, Germany. So he's traveled all over the globe. And uh, he's also co-founder of Theatrician, of which you, I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions on this, sir. <laughs> and uh, he's also founded uh, V-Log Charitable Trust that works on pollution, um, police uh, reforms and protection laws. So, uh, sir has been, you know, you can always relate him that, okay, yeah, he, he, you will be very familiar with his face because he's there on TV, he's there on YouTube channels, wherever there are top shows, top education shows, he'll be there. <laughs> In fact, very controversial and, you know, taboo topics also he has spoken on. So, very interestingly. So, sir, uh, you have been... Uh, awarded so many awards. I would just like to mention that you got, I think you received this Young Creative Entrepreneur Award by Co British Council of India, and you've been recognized as 40 under 40 educators, and also edu Indian Educator of the Year. These are only the few and the recent ones I'm telling. <laughs> so this is, this is the, you know, level of, uh, uh, you know, he vision he has. So we just wanted to share his vision and mission in life. And we also wanted to ask him the 10 questions, which will, you know, give a brief idea about what he thinks about education system in India. So, sir, may we begin? Please, uh, uh, thank you so much for such a warm welcome. You're very, very kind. Uh, obviously, your viewers know that uh, all of this is not entirely uh, one person's doing that there's a team involved and there's a lot of people who contributed to and you know a person is just a face of it and there's a, a team concentrated effort uh, towards it and very very kind of you to invite me I am very excited about it as well I've been following your show uh, a lot of my friends have been a part of it and uh, you know uh, you you've asked very intelligent and, and uh, a lot of prominent questions and I'm very, very happy to be so, here. Thank so you so much. Thank you, sir. But I'll just say that this is the typical, typical answer of a true leader. You know, I've called so many, they've been very lucky to be, you know, honored by the presence of so many educators and 
they all say that this is a team effort and i've not done anything you know it's always uh, making you know your team in front and backing it up so i think that's one thing that's been common to all of you <laughs> so so okay. the yeah so the first question i would like to ask you is uh, so how did this all happen like from your journey from san xavier's uh, then to purdue you did your uh, mba and then uh, you probably work for so many multinational companies and then back to education system in india i mean that's unheard of normally right no uh, so uh, you know i'm an accidental educator uh, it, it 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 was not a planned thing and uh, as it would it would happen with most people when you are in school and college you feel that you can uh, take over the world and uh, i still think that i can take over the world i can still i still feel i can change the world and yeah. i strongly believe that people who have that belief that they can change the world eventually do so uh, you know i founded theatrician when i was still in school uh, along with my friends and uh, uh, we 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 thought that we'll make theater a viable career option for everyone and uh, some of the recognitions that you spoke about uh, happened at that time and uh, uh, we still happen to be the probably one of the few theater groups from india that was flown first class from india to london to be interviewed wow. by bbc that was a like you know one of one of the <laughs> grand experiences at that time but uh, uh, what that did was that opened up a lot of opportunities it opened up a lot of opportunities because a lot of universities then came knocking and but you came around and said that you know what uh, we're going to offer you a scholarship do you want to come over mm-hmm. and we said that fine uh, we'll do that and uh, i had no plan of doing an mba uh, and i went with that after that there was a venture capitalist uh, who said that you know what i'm starting a fund and uh, uh, we'll be doing a consultancy in london would you like to live in london and i said that you know london is my favorite city in the world so why not and uh, that's how london happened and uh, uh, when i was in london i would come back to india for a lot of uh, holidays mm-hmm. and during the holidays you know anyone who's in theater would always tell you that you want to talk you want to reach out you want to do workshops you want to uh, uh, you know interact and i would do a lot of uh, workshops with schools colleges Uh, because my friends and uh, my now wife uh, was still running theatrician and uh, uh, it was just a calling from inside because you know a lot of things happened uh, just without any plan yeah. and uh, uh, the benchmarks of the world that you know you were driving a fast car and you were living in a big city and you had a house and you had uh, a considerable income like you know all of that all those benchmarks eventually don't mean much mm-hmm. eventually you want to no as to you know what is your purpose in purpose in life and uh, is it happiness is it making others happy but then the happiness has to come from within mm-hmm. and uh, talking to people uh, interacting uh, gave me happiness and that's what i found with theater mm-hmm. and eventually i realized that when i was doing these workshops with schools colleges and make no mistake about it i i, I did this with uh, some of the best ones uh, you know iit gandhi nagar uh, uh, sindhavis mumbai uh, you know i am the bab like you know you name it and i have done workshops uh, with the students and the faculty and uh, that's when i realized that you know there has to be a bigger purpose uh, and i came back to india and i decided to pursue this uh, full time i had no plan absolutely no intention so uh, i wanted to first understand as to how education system works uh-huh. and uh, through some social connects i, I happened to meet uh, shivat jaipuria who runs uh, uh, you know the jaipuria group and i said that you know what i have these crazy ideas and uh, what do you think about it and uh, you know i'm glad he trusted me with responsibility of being part of the founder team at uh, indore and uh, uh, so after london we first came and we lived in indore for two years beautiful city wow. is one of the most uh, yes yeah, i have done my graduation from indore to post graduation from indore i love oh, it <laughs> Well, yeah. So yeah, Indore is a great city, and you know it. It, yes. uh, it gave us a perspective of India like we never imagined because you know uh, born and brought up in Calcutta and then living uh, outside of India completely. We never lived in any other city. And uh, after we successfully established uh, Jaipur Institute of Management in Indore, decided to move to uh, New Delhi because I thought that the requirement at grassroots levels is much higher, and uh, we need to get into uh, K twelve schools. and that's when we started setting up uh, uh, state mr japuria schools across the country and we've scaled up now to like you said rightly 37 schools uh, about 30000 students and we work in 
typically tier 2 tier 3 cities this is another question i would like to ask you sir this was one really that clicked me uh, so yeah. this is how the journey happened when you yeah. love to interact with people and theater and you know all that so i'm sure there are a lot of questions i have so i mean opening starting up a school was a thought that came into your mind because uh, you thought you needed to reach out to children and students and you know bring that change in the education system right so you were pulled toward the field of education because of that that you wanted the transformation to happen or you were just wanted to make it a big venture this is my question too sure so uh so I, I genuinely feel that, you know, it's not just about a venture. I feel that the impact that you can make is 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 there. Uh, when you look at your purpose of life, you look at uh, uh, working with children because, you know, they are the future. And for the economic development of any country, education is, is paramount. When we traveled uh, the length and breadth of the country, uh, when I say we, I mean me and my wife, we traveled the length and breadth of the country. We realized that India is a country that changes every 100 kilometers Absolutely. and we realize yeah. that uh, uh, the opportunity to make space. So uh, that's when we, we uh, thought that, you know, K-12 schools is going to be uh, the, the way forward. Uh, when obviously you speak to a lot of people, you speak to a lot of uh, consultants and the consultants told us that you should go focus on the, on the big cities, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore. So whatever the consultant says, you have to do the absolute opposite. So I decided to go to tier two, tier three, oh, really? and uh, and uh, uh, the and 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 look like you know I really feel that the aspiration level that people have in smaller cities is incredible. The kind of zeal, the kind of enthusiasm, the kind of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the jugaad. Uh, concept that we talk about in India is yeah, brilliant. Absolutely, absolutely fabulous, sir. So okay. this is one thing that I would just like to ask you also. So this, the, you know, uh, it's like my next question that's connected. So this is why you chose the tier two, tier three cities because, you know, they have a, because we have also observed like when we work with the NGOs as our CSR initiatives, we have found that people children who we teach in schools, um, they kind of, you know, they will need some instructions. But when you go to a slum area and get the same activity done, they will do it like this. Before I could speak, they could assemble the entire glider and the entire kaleidoscope. And I was like, what? I'm not even started. I mean, it was, it is amazing the way, I think receptivity is more there. The right. And there's, there's also a myth that, you know, uh, you know, the, like we are also obsessed with uh, English and we are so obsessed with our uh, big city uh, uh, buildings and infrastructure where we don't, we don't actually appreciate the fact that, you know, these cities have worked so well and this is where the bulk of the growth will come from. This is where the requirement of high quality education is there. This is where the access to high quality education is the most required. And, uh, you know, you, you find that uh, people are smarter uh, in these places and, uh, it changed me as a person. I did not know that cities such as Barabanki, Balia, Bahraj, Basti uh, existed. Uh, you know, absolutely shameful that I did not know that these cities are such beautiful cities in our country. And uh, now we, we, we have established some of the top end schools in these cities. And, and I'm so proud of the kind of work it we've done. It is so in these satisfying cities. when you reach out to the children and educators there. And feel that change happening. I think that is the purpose of life that we want, you know, kind of giving back to the society. And then we see the transformation happening, the child being groomed in the way we want. And we are actually trying to make that change. Sir. So I think that is why you picked up the tier two, tier three, right opposite to the consultants, what consultants told you. <laughs> so, Absolutely. Uh, sir, Absolutely. Uh, your focus areas, like when you started the school. So uh, there are a set of norms that you need to follow, SOPs and CBSC certifications and all. So uh, what was your focus? Like, where did you think that you wanted this to happen there? You know, in your school, like whatever you, like, you know, you kind of have a dream that I want my school to be like this. 
so i feel that every school has its own flavor every school has its own uh, personality and character which is very very important and you know every city has an, an influence on that as a hygiene factor what uh, i planned was that uh, uh, every child irrespective of the child is studying in a delhi ncr or the child is studying in a lucknow or the child is studying in a varanasi or in a patna will have access to the best quality of education they that was the whole crux of it and then you started working backwards with the problem that you know what is the problem why are they not getting access mm-hmm. so you need uh, high quality plants you need pedagogy which can be translated and transacted in the classroom irrespective of where the classroom is and so you need to get teachers from outside as well you need to groom the teachers you need to have a training system a monitoring system measurability became important so you started working backwards on that you started creating documents processes on that but you also understood that uh, every city is going to be very different you understood that the personality of the teachers cannot be compromised with because they bring so much innovation and creativity at grassroots ground ground level as well so yeah that's what allowed them to flourish uh, more than what we would have ever imagined great that was the kind of we always wanted that uh, uh, let us not lose out on the charm of the city by itself because the economic development of the city will happen around that school like so in many of the places the school by itself became the most prominent landmark we work in cities such as mehmudabad uh, where the school is the most prominent landmark of the city and uh, 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 you know and and we are so proud of the fact that uh, teachers take their responsibility so seriously that the growth of the city the economic development of the city will happen because of the school Beautiful. and i think that's the kind of uh, transactions that we want to see as well so i think uh, i mean uh, you are uh, you are involving uh, educators in a mission to you know transform the society from the grassroots level i mean this is i think something really because uh, most of the uh, startups happen in top most cities because probably the parents have more a uh, paying capacity or something so when you move to a smaller zone or uh, tier 2 three cities of course the paying capacity may not be as much but if you maintain those standards the you know parents also feel so so uh, satisfied and uh, if the children are doing well i think that is the most uh, important thing that can happen uh, so also i would like to ask you so why do you think um, you know say to mr jaipuria like you said it has flavors from the city so why do you think it's so unique is it the culture of the school or you have a common um, you know string that is stringing them up all or you have you know curriculum wise academically or co curricular wise i mean do you have a, a kind of connect with all the schools that okay this is this thing something we go all going to do it so oh, yes uh, you know when you look at the curriculum when you look at so we call it the curriculum superstructure uh, the curriculum superstructure across all schools is absolutely the same when you look at the annual calendars mm-hmm. theoretically they should be the same we understand that practically it will not happen because in a varanasi there's going to be a chhat puja which is huge in a patna there's a chhat puja which is going to be huge in a delhi ncr it's not going to happen as big but you know you need to make those subtle adjustments uh we do a standardization when it comes to assessments we do a standardization in com- terms of training mm-hmm. teachers get access to some of the so i have a large team at the delhi office as well who are involved in research and we we feel it's our obligation to pass on that research to the teachers because they are so busy mm-hmm. on a day to day operation of the school which is very very tough they are dealing with uh, the end uh, you know the end users the school students and when you have a student like 40 students in a class you're dealing with 40 personalities it's, it's a- very very tough it's commendable the kind of work teachers do so we feel obligated to pass on our research and our knowledge yeah. to the teachers as well we have standardized a lot of things in terms of our worksheets in terms of the curriculum yeah. uh, the outcomes uh, but most importantly all schools are well connected with uh, uh, three things that happen all all the time one is obviously uh uh the 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 inter school competitions yeah. i think that's really really exciting you know i never took it very seriously but when you know a student performs in a sports uh, competition or a cultural competition we call the cultural competition crescendo we call our sports competition pinnacle mm-hmm. uh when they come and they perform in that and they, you know out of 40 schools one has come out 
as a winner like you know the charm and bonding with students from across the other cities is great for them and you know we're so happy to provide that so that's one common thread that binds them uh, the other common thread is we have a lot of standardization in terms of the presentation and graphics across the school so when you enter a school from outside the schools will look different because you know some would have a red stone one would have a black stone one would have glass structure but when you enter the school you get the same feeler right. i think that's very important uh, the ethos is yeah. get, get the vibes get uh, reflected and the third thing you know the because the annual calendars are pretty much the same students can do a lot of collaborative group projects now think about it a grade 7 student so we have something called the interdisciplinary project where all the subjects get uh, involved uh, we picked up something like harry potter in class 7 and we told the students that we're going to do harry potter with with you know and and, and we're going to have projects on geography mathematics physics etc now think about a student who's in balia is on a project with student in uh barwani in madhya pradesh or in jaipur and you know they're working together on projects and it's incredible feeling for them Amazing. now we've taken it one step further we've taken it one step further where we are talking to our international uh collaborators and students from australia uk from bhutan uh are part of uh, projects along with our jaipuria students very very exciting thanks beautiful i think it's a brilliant idea when you pick up things that engage children i think they get more involved also if it's a common thing especially i don't you know we need to understand why they're so attracted and gravitated towards uh, maybe minecraft or you know things like that we need to understand their behavior and think that way you have to trans man uh, to make it more engaging because if you teach geography like we uh, you know because a child i think thinks uh, he sees the thing happening he thinks ki ye flower blossom ho raha hai ho raha hai but he doesn't understand there's a physics chemistry biology happening he doesn't understand the separation of the subjects i think we should teach it in an integrated way like brilliant i think harry potter was something really amazing <laughs> Uh, so so there is another very interesting question that i really wanted to ask that uh, children in are pretty much sorted these days you know like uh, especially like i don't know metro cities if you say like uh, if you ask a great six child or seven child i mean maybe they just inspire or aspire to be that but they'll say i want to be a chef i don't i want to be this i want to be this so uh, there are a lot of children who want to you know a kind of start up start their start up you know so do, should we introduce some entrepreneurship programs in the higher levels like maybe 11th 12th you know some some kind of a small curriculum uh, maybe extra curricular i don't know man I so, uh, so I, I have a two-fold question answer for you. For you, one is that uh, uh, you know, so I feel that curiosity is one of the best things that's there. I'm I'm the most curious person in the world, and that's why probably I'm I'm so hyper all the time. But uh, I'm I'm I genuinely feel that curiosity is very very important because then you learn to ask questions, and then you you want to discover more. So whatever, and I want to say this to all your parents, to all your teachers, to all the educators who might be watching this. make sure that you never say no to a child for the questions they ask uh instead let them find answers like you know there's been uh, obviously like the last 18 months we've all gone through this and there've been zoom bombs and there've been so many classes that have been interrupted but don't throw the baby with the bath water like you know all of social media is not bad uh, all of technology is not bad and all of technology is not good like you know it's not one versus the other so you have to make the judgment call with the 21st century skills as well it's important to do that that you provide students that kind of a platform that leads me to understanding of uh, social media and leads me to understanding for example you know the one of my favorite social media tools is actually spotify because you can collaborate with so many people so on the, on one thing which is music it's yeah. brilliant so you know when we say social media people generally get stuck on like facebook bahut kharab hai aur instagram mein dekho kaise photographs hai but there is more so it's important it's important that you know you accept it that these are the 21st century students you accept it that it's a hygiene factor for them yeah. so let them learn more with that uh, you know by virtue of the fact that we run uh, four management institutes as well uh, which offer mba programs pgdm uh, we we do a, a mini mba for our students so during the summer and the winter months they do a mini mba like a, a 10 day program where they not only create 
uh, the business startups, but they also get to shadow a lot of the business leaders. I think it's incredible. Like you know, I look at look at myself when I was in grade when I was in grade eight or nine. Would I have the guts to walk into a corporate and say, "Here, give me some money because I want to do a startup"? I probably wouldn't. Students these days do it. I think I think we were very lost as I think um, I don't know <laughs> if I see as class seven and eight child these days they're pretty much sorted you know and yeah. I was like oh whatever my mom or dad tells I'll do that <laughs> and we were totally confused generation at least I was and a lot of like children like me yeah or they were different you know um, uh, doctor engineer kind of uh, you know things but i do remember that we do have aspirations and i think grade 4 5 6 children whatever they think at that time sir i think it's their dream because i used to be thinking that i'm going to be a i need a microscope so i i eventually became a microbiologist so i think it, you know you should push them if they say i want to be a chef let them give a push you know we should so i this is a brilliant thing so they do have a startup kind of a thing although it's not a part of curriculum but the kind of internship like you you say yeah, yeah. one month yeah. or two months wow so you know so it's it's a it's a, we call it the chisel program yeah. and it happens uh, uh, twice a year during the summer months as well as the uh, autumn break hmm. where they uh, participate with they get access to lectures from uh, some of the top end faculty we also have a lot of e content available uh, you know on various platforms mm-hmm. so uh, they get access to that and they also get uh, handheld handheld opportunities such as an internship but they get to shadow uh, uh, some that's, of the that's mean, you have that confidence to talk to people that's i think amazing brilliant sir uh, so talking about yes the life skill thing again entrepreneurship is one life skill so you have been involved in this we log charitable trust and you have i think been extremely empathetic uh, mm-hmm. you know so i think after pandemic uh, we all need to be connecting as a society and giving back whatever we have so what mm-hmm. exactly is this charitable trust doing and how are you also passing it on to the children in the school so uh, you know uh, vlog is uh, uh, india citizen action is vlog i i was i was actually sorry i misspelled it yeah not, not at all <laughs> yeah it's a common thing so vlog is india's uh, citizen action network where uh, we believe that you know every citizen should have a voice speak up about uh, we are concentrating on on right now on three activities which is uh, uh, environment empowerment and social justice mm-hmm. environment because all of us are suffering with pollution so Absolutely. it was 2016 when we started uh, my right to breathe it's a it started as a twitter hashtag and it uh, is one of the most prominent voices and you know everyone has come across it at some point of the time mm-hmm. it has about 21.6 million measured twitter impressions and um, it grew organically because you and i all of us have suffered with pollution it's not a problem only of delhi india has uh, the ncap has identified uh, 122 cities in the country which uh, have very bad air so we uh, started working on that and this is where we went to the mrtv schools program where we work with schools colleges uh, to not only create awareness about as to how you can how you are affected by pollution but also empower them to find solutions i think it's important that uh, we understand that you know in a high society of a gurgaon uh, it's uh, the pollution problem is very different vis-a-vis a problem in say a kanpur where uh, it could be something completely uh, else okay. so it's important to address that but it's important to understand that this is a problem The second thing that we work on is uh, empowerment, where uh, we again it started as a Twitter hashtag No Rape India during the Me Too movement, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, we realized that it's important to talk about it. And then we went into schools, and we realized that there were so many uh, girls, so many boys who felt insecure about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, everyone was doing good touch, bad touch theoretically, and it was it's happening, it's still happening. And we said that you know, a lot of people don't get a chance to talk. So I'll give you an idea. Uh, I I did a clubhouse with uh, a prominent uh, uh, army person, and it was supposed to be a one-hour uh, clubhouse, and it went on for five and a half hours. Mm-hmm. And we had people coming and opening up about as to what they went through. Mm-hmm. Now, as a back-end connection to NGOs that can support these people, can empower these people, I think that's very very important uh, to understand that what are your rights? Uh, how can you how can you file an FIR, for example, against something like that? and to find uh, connect as well 
The third thing we are working on is social justice, where we work with uh, the police. Uh, you know, they are so uh, neglected, and you know, hats off to the police uh, women and police men. Like you know, they work very very hard, but no one really takes care of them. So we started something called Police Sahi to to Desh Sahi. Uh, we did some uh, some shows with uh, noted uh, journalist Faye Souza. and uh, uh, you know we spoke to some top cops and we understood that uh, they are as much in need of uh, empowerment as anyone else yeah. and uh, i'm i'm very happy and proud of all the work that we've done with vlog like so if you go to the website you will see that the likes of uh, sonu sood and uh, kiran majumdar and uh, uh, they've all endorsed uh, the kind of work we are doing yeah. this is something that i founded with uh, uh, some of the prominent names in the indian corporate space if you see the trustees you will find I that you know we are taking this out sir this is really amazing i mean actually you know um, i don't know most of us have a very uh, scary impression of police person you know when you see but you don't understand the amount of work they do and so stressful for them their entire life is like you know bonkers like going around yeah. running here i mean if you see them from a human perspective we don't see them as humans actually we see them as machines working all the time no, so marshi ji if you and i have to work one day or one week for 48 hours we, we are going to probably sing about it for Absolutely. months to come that 48 hours we have worked but uh, uh, they have to do that on a day to day 24 7365 they are on the job it's not simple uh, and and you know if if someone would use a bad word and if on your interview someone comes and tells you are aapko to kuch bhi kaam nahi aata you probably feel bad about it for a few days <laughs> weeks yeah. months they have to hear it probably 10 time. times a day that you know yeah. ऑडियो Or for this, or what do you do exactly? Like, I mean, how do you reach out to, uh, you know, do this? So, so students are actually leading the entire thing. So we just originated with the idea, and probably all us trustees, we probably just put in uh, the 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 entire structure in place. But all all the debates, so all the uh, activities. All the trainings are actually student led. Students are the ones who are going to do. Wow! Wow! So yeah, they they kind the of. so you give them that uh, you know push and then they take it forward and you know spread it out kind of awareness kind of a campaign it is and then absolutely say, so yeah. i was very active on uh, for example with my right to breathe i was very active for uh, for uh, the initial few years now it's just students who keep tagging me on oh. twitter if anyone <laughs> wow. they keep really? doing it that you know this is what we are doing and can you speak to this minister and can you speak to that minister they obviously don't they they think that i know a lot of ministers and a lot of high end people but uh, i don't i don't know anyone but like i'm so glad that yeah but at least they coming up with the something you know that's that's the, that see the children are recognizing that this is a problem and this is how we can solve it i mean at least that thought is coming into their mind oh absolutely absolutely so when when delhi set up two of uh, you know two of the political parties set up uh, smog towers it was the students who actually turned around and said that you know the research indicates otherwise it doesn't work and like you know and we were like great i am just playing the courier i'm going to oh, forward your message thoughts. to someone who i know and let's see as to how it goes yeah. and uh, it's they are the ones who are leading it and, yeah, and it's, it's incredible that young india is so opinionated uh, they are so sorted oh, uh, they are research heavy which yeah. is so so good to see i think that is one big advantage of the net we have like you said i mean the uh, we, they can google so much we had to go to libraries and read so much and then we won't have time to do it but at the drop of the button as you just google and you find out so many things i think children have access to so much knowledge uh, yes it has to be channelized but yes uh, sir Uh, now one thing that i think it's your favorite like you co-founded this uh, or you the founder right for uh, of theatrician so what is it all about and uh, i would really love this was one question i wanted to ask you in the beginning only <laughs> so theatrician is something i co-founded uh, when i was still in school it's a, it's india's most prolific english theater group uh, and uh, you know 
uh, we've done, I think, close to 200 uh, uh, proscenium plays and uh, recognized lots of awards, rewards. Mm. Uh, I, I used to act, uh, I used to produce, I used to direct, I used to write, but uh, uh, it was one fateful uh, Diwali day when my uh, wife and my friends actually chucked me out of theatrician. They said that, you know, you don't have time for us, so uh, <laughs> your, your services are no longer required. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, so I was uh, so now I'm I'm just a glorified uh, uh, Facebook and Instagram uploader of theatrician <laughs> supporter. But uh, uh, theatrician works towards uh, you know providing a platform to young adults and elders who would like to perform on stage, uh, not just for creating awareness but for entertainment, just for fun. If you want to do something, mm-hmm. simply uh, it is your uh, communication skills, your personality skills. We work with a lot of schools, colleges, including some of the best in the country, uh, such as Modern School, Wellam Boys, you name it, you know, Theatrician works uh, with. And uh, Theatrician would uh, do annual productions and workshops as well. Uh, we are doing a lot of uh, comedy shows with, uh, with... So this is our effort to... Or rather, this is Theatrician's effort. I'm okay. no longer officially involved. You don't take the credit now, now, don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't dare. They, they'll start asking me for royalty now. Uh, yeah. But uh, what theatrician is now doing is that so we realized that uh, the hospitality industry was very badly hit mm-hmm. and uh, uh, people were not visiting hos- uh, to, uh, to restaurants and hotels. And uh, there was a reason to bring them back. And if theater and comedy mm-hmm. entertainment is the reason, so why not do supper plays and uh, murder mysteries during uh, dinners? As oh, in, so, wow. So this is what Theatrician is doing presently, where we're trying to revive uh, the hospi- support in whatever way we can in the hospitality industry as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, there are lots of communication workshops that are happening with schools and colleges. Mm-hmm. Uh, we mm-hmm. realize one thing that uh, the pandemic has ensured that students have forgotten how to ask questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone has uh, uh, Zoom and Google Meet friends and when they meet in person, they don't know how to behave, how to react. So, and it's important to break that uh, uh, apprehension that people have. It's important to it's important to provide them that platform. So those kind of workshops are also happening right now. Brilliant, absolutely. So, uh, so I think around 15 days back, there was one in Select City War yeah. in Saket. And yeah, yeah. unfortunately, I couldn't visit that time, but you posted it on Facebook. So this was again in a restaurant, something happening, comedy show or something? Oh. So yeah, it was a comedy show. So we, uh, Theatrician has a product called the Comedy Kitchen, which mm-hmm. is uh, uh, about uh, 14 uh, short plays, which are like, you know, uh, comical. And uh, uh, it's the perfect setting for uh, restaurants. restaurants. And uh, Select City Walk has performance areas right at the terrace on the seventh floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that's where the performance was. I think about 100 odd people turned up mm-hmm. and it was it was good to good to be back uh, yeah. in person. Yeah. Theatrician has been doing plays uh, using Zoom and uh, very very interestingly. Wow, and, uh, that's yeah, yeah. brilliant. I know. I don't know. I mean, doing a play on Zoom would be so difficult. Stand-up comedian is okay. I mean, you can just have a Zoom thing, or, but doing a play is really tough. Uh, so, so I was thinking, like, and since you're so much involved in this, uh, you've been in school also. So, do you also write? One question. This is part A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I write a lot, but no one wants to read it. Yeah, and it's uh, like even except for my daughter, no one wants to read what I'm writing. So <laughs> yeah, but uh, I do write. Um, so I contribute uh, articles to obviously the educational magazines, uh, newspapers, uh, um, and I'm so I'm in the process of writing uh, two books, and uh, hopefully you'll see them soon. But uh, what I'm most excited about is that I'm. Uh, Writing, I'm, I'm coming back to theater this year and December I'm writing my play would be produced. So that is something oh, that I'm brilliant, brilliant. Wow. So you pick up your actors or you become a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely pick up my actors, audition. Wow. Yeah. Proper procedurally. Okay. So where is this going to happen? Any clue? Or not not to be revealed? Uh, so we'll tour with it. Uh, three cities, Delhi, Mumbai and Calcutta. Delhi is uh, there. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. I might be there because uh, so since there's so much drama, drama thing happening, sir, I mean, in your, this thing, and you encourage children, I think it breaks a lot of barriers. They come to interact. They, yeah. You know, I think uh, sometimes uh, language, communication, all these things, they have to open up. So I think drama and theater helps a lot 
to yeah. you know get a child confident so should it be integrated with education also integrated in the sense i mean you know, you're already doing it but what i mean is that during a class should there be something uh, dramatized like you just said harry potter or something like that you know to engage the children more and make them do more research on it so as teachers we are anyways very good performers i think you know you need a, an element of performance for uh, being in a classroom that's very important sure. uh, you educators if you don't have uh, theater as part of uh, your repertoire you should have it because it will break so many inhibitions you will have enhanced uh, communication skills it also there is so much project management with theater there is so much uh, uh, coordination and team play with theater as well Yeah. and it will give students skills that they will remember for the rest of their lives yeah so uh, it's very very important not just in 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 as a production or in a theater aspect but also to integrate that as part of your pedagogy very very important to do that yeah. uh, so when i when i talk about introducing theater i don't really mean that you know let's just do edward albee or let's do uh, william shakespeare there is more about the technical aspect of theater which you can translate into pedagogy as well as in your everyday communication which is very very important yeah so like when we are teaching about gliders you know so because that's uh, that's the most uh, i i think it's very important for an educator to have a, a dramatized version and getting children involved so we have this you know when we teach about uh, migration of birds we let them stand in the bird form and say the see they are all v shape that i aerodynamic that's why aerodynamicity comes into you know so the Absolutely. first bird is taking turns and why is she taking turns you know like questions like that have to come to their mind and then they have to be solved by them so they shayad usko hawa zyada lagti hogi isliye wo piche aa jati hai i mean the thinking starts you know if you engage children so i think it's brilliant to have uh, in fact uh, when i was doing my post graduation in microbiology so there was this mr uh, professor govind ji who had come from illinois and he taught us the electron transport chain making us stand like electrons so that was the first thing that we uh, you know we thought oh theater and drama can be done in this way also <laughs> because what we yeah sorry so so you know i'm just adding on to your point and probably you know uh, correlated there is a need to change the indian education system more to integrate uh, you know things right at the start when you are bringing it to the children for example when you talk about quantum mechanics when you talk about thermodynamics do you know it's most easily relatable to stock markets now an investment banker and a physicist when you look at it are two different aspects right but they are so so everything that you do in a stock market is related to quantum mechanics when we are introducing quantum mechanics i think that happens in grade 8 why are we not talking about careers as exactly a, 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 an investment banker yeah. i think this is what is most important you know other i mean just i give this example so often you know why can't we have a physics teacher in a music class and a physics teacher in a sports class telling them about angles and i mean this would be such a beautiful i think i'm a little utop going a little uh, it's like a dream school but I think no, but you're right. That. You're right. If you, if you, if you, so, uh, when I was, I lived in London for six years, and some of my closest friends were investment bankers and people working with the big four. They all came with an art and a music background. They, their primary degrees were all, all in art and music. And it's just such a big cliche to say that you know, do an engineering and then do an MBA and then you become uh, a consultant or you become uh, an investment banker. It's not required. Uh, you need to have logic. Nice. and logic probably comes best with music so Absolutely. so 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 you know those are the those are the boundaries and those are the shackles that need to break i think one big thing also sir i'm a little go- going a little off track but um, we should be winding up i'm sure you have short on time but i think uh, you know like uh, the the thing that we have in our mindset the grade thing has to go from parents mindsets you know the grade Okay, 10 on 10 and uh, engineering medical i think if i've seen so many average students doing exceptionally well in their lives i mean exceptionally well that they're satisfied with their careers and we look up to them you know that they were nowhere like uh, 10 on 10 child did nothing big but the right. average one did a lot because maybe he had a bigger perspective in, in mind like you know and understood life better वो बेचारा दस में से दस लाने वाला पढ़ता ही रह गया 
उसको समझ ही नहीं आया द अदर प्रॉब्लम इज दैट यू नो वी कंसंट्रेट ओनली ऑन द वीकनेस ऑफ द चाइल्ड व्हिच इज सच अ बिग प्रॉब्लम नाउ इफ मालिश्री जी इज नॉट गुड एट मैथमेटिक्स व्हाट आई एम गोइंग टू डू इज हाउ डू यू नो दिस यू यू आर नॉट गुड इन मैथमेटिक्स आई एम गोइंग टू फोकस ओनली ऑन मैथमेटिक्स विद यू but you might be good at biology you might be good at english you might be good at chemistry you might be good at you know uh, in other things but i'm not going to concentrate on that what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus with you on mathematics mm-hmm. the second thing i'm going to do is i'm going to publicly humiliate you in the classroom mm-hmm. and third thing i'm going to do is i'm going to tell your parents that oh you know what your no, child no, is not good no. which is so wrong like you know these are the things that we need to come out of instead of doing that focus on the strengths Yeah, that's that's very true so i think it's a big big lesson i mean we should all be learning it and introspecting as a parent as an educator we should be just going on revising this because we do this it's it's i don't know it's innate in us indian parents i think i don't know about abroad but indian parents yes they do have this mindset that jo kharab hai us pe focus karo uska tuition lagao us pe karo the other subjects let like if the person is the child is good at art wo to theek hai chalega chodo that's nothing leave it So sir now we come to the rapid fire round which is the 10th question. <laughs> so this is more of your dislikes and likes. So I would love to know may I start? Yeah please please. Okay. So this is about your favorite book sir. Harry Potter. Oh love it. Okay. Uh so your sun sign? Uh Virgo. Virgo. Same. Okay. A uh, favorite movie? uh this is a very very long answer but i'll play it safe and call it the godfather the godfather oh wow okay and uh, which play do you want to enact all the time like you know it stayed 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 in your mind and you really want to do it again and again 12 angry men wow okay and your dream role that you've not done as yet you would like to do uh again malin randall's role from godfather or uh, <laughs> Yeah, pulp fiction is something I I feel has potential to do on stage. So pulp fiction is something also I want to do. Sir, uh, you would uh, would you be performing sometime oh. maybe? I mean, like, oh. do you do it often or you don't get time now? I don't get time now, but uh, uh, so I do a, a mono act. So Mr. Bachchan did a movie called Main Azad Hoon, which mm-hmm. was a play uh, meet Joe Black, and then uh, uh, you know we reached out to Mr. Javed Akhtar and we got rights for it as well. So I do a mono act of Main Azad Hoon, uh, fairly often. So you have it on YouTube or somewhere, or you just no, 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 no. no. I've not put it on YouTube. On YouTube, okay. So it's more, more of life. So, sir, is it beaches or hills for you? Hills. Hills. Your favorite destination? London. London. Okay. Okay, I think so. We've learned a lot. I mean, Harry Potter was one thing that has really stuck and. of course the weaknesses of children that we should not be focusing on so i think all the educators and parents who have been listening we just we we don't want to do it but we just do it i don't know why we do it even i do it at times you know i'm i'm confessing it that i do it with my children i think it's genetic or i don't know the environment is like that so uh so wish you all the best and really looking forward to your books that you are launching in december yeah yes Yeah, yes. we'll be looking forward uh, to uh, reading them, and I'm going to send a review. Uh, whether it's good or bad, I don't know. I'll I'll be sending you. <laughs> Absolutely, always always open to uh, feedback yeah. as well. But thank, thank you so much for this interaction. I really enjoyed it. I um, loved it, sir. Absolutely, a different different view because I've never never ever uh, yeah. met an educator who was also a theatrician. So I mean, like this is a strange blend that you have. So it was beautiful interacting. Thank you yes. so much, sir. Thank you for your thank time. you. Thank you. Have a pleasant evening and best wishes. Same, same to you, sir. And beautiful Diwali ahead. Beautiful days ahead. Thank you so much, sir. And to you and your loved ones as well. Thank you so much for having me as part of your show. Thank, thank you. you.